Okay, this is lesson 10.5, tangents. And I have this little joke here. Isn't it amazing how some people will just go off on tangents? And of course, I know what a tangent is, so it seems kind of funny to me. Um, and generally, now that I'm not doing uh, teaching in front of the classroom, I would often go off on a tangent. You might hear somebody say that about their teacher or somebody you know. They're always going off on a tangent. And so this was way funnier at one time, and it would be way funnier if you go back and look at this after you know what a tangent is. So what is a tangent? Well, there it is. <laughs> okay, well, what are we looking at? Um, this spot right here where the line touches, that is called your point of tangency. Okay, this little spot right there. And this line is called your tangent line. Okay, does that make that all the funnier? Probably not. There's your circle, and then they're going off on a tangent. They're not staying on their, uh, their focus. Um, if I get off on a tangent, I might start talking about, well, who knows, camp or family or something like that. Going off on a tangent, I'm not staying focused on what I'm supposed to stay on. Okay, well, enough with that. If a line is tangent, then the line is perpendicular to the radius that is drawn to the point of tangency. Okay, so if it's tangent, so right there I'm going to tell you that's a tangent line. You just look at that and say, hey, that's a, that line is tangent. Then, the line is perpendicular to the radius. So there's the radius that comes out and touches it at the point of tangency. And you can say this is a right angle. That is what that means. Okay, so if you know it's tangent, then the radius that comes out and touches the tangent line at the point of tangency is going to be perpendicular to the tangent line. So example one here, segment RS is tangent to circle Q at point R. Okay, find Y. Just use this rule that we just learned. This forms a 90 degree angle. Okay, so that means <laughs> I have a right triangle. I know two of the three sides, so I will use the Pythagorean theorem. So 16 squared plus, gosh, I don't know what this is, we call it x, equals 20 squared. So I go ahead and do all kinds of math. Let me grab my, grab my calculator. 16 squared, 256 plus x squared equals 400. Subtract 56 or 256 from both sides. I'm getting 144. That means x is equal to 12. That is what I'm calling x from here to here. Well, the other part is also going to be 12 because they're both a radius. So add that together. My y equals 24. Very similar problem. Segment CD is tangent to circle B at point D. Okay, well, once again, this is my tangent. They don't show the entire line. They show just this little segment of it. It's going to form a right angle with the radius, and they want us to find A. Well, if the diameter is 40, this radius is 20. So I kind of do the same thing again. A squared plus 20 squared equals 25 squared. A squared plus 400 equals 625. A squared equals... 225, that's after I subtract 400, and the square root of 225, I believe, is 15. Okay, so my A value is 15, and we're good. This is actually a multiple of the Pythagorean triple, that 3, 4, 5. If you had 3 times 5, 4 times 5 is 20, 5 times 5 is 25. I don't know if you would catch that or not, but that's what it is. Okay, if a line is perpendicular to a radius, so if they tell you this, hey, there's a right angle there, there's your radius, there's your perpendicular, or there's your tangent line, and it just so happens to be perpendicular, then you can conclude that the line is tangent. Okay, I think I didn't say that quite correctly. So if you have this line that comes out and touches, and it happens to be perpendicular to the radius, then you can say the line is tangent. It's basically what is that the converse of our previous rule. Now, how does that apply to us in our problems? Right here, they want us to determine whether BC is tangent to circle A. Well, in order for it to be tangent, it's going to have to form a right angle right here between the radius and the tangent line. And how will I know if it's a right angle? 
if I have a right triangle. And how do I know if I have a right triangle? I use Pythagorean theorem. So 9 squared plus 7 squared, does that actually equal the hypotenuse, which is 14 squared? So I'm going to check my work. 81 plus 49, does that equal 196? If I add it up here, I get 130. Isn't that what 89, 81 plus 49 is? Does that equal 196? And I'm going to put down a big no. So it is not going to be tangent. Example four. Once again, kind of the same idea. Determine whether it, uh, segment WE is tangent. So you're going to check to see if it's a right angle. How do I know if it's a right angle? Well, if it's a right triangle. How do I know if it's a right triangle? Do the Pythagorean theorem. So 10 squared plus 24 Oh, no, I don't want to do. Oh, yeah, I do want to do 24 squared. This is what I'm trying to figure out if that's a right angle. So plus 24 squared, does that equal 26 squared? I better go back and check. Did I use my hypotenuse as the correct hypotenuse? Yeah, 14. Okay, just need to make myself happy. So is it true that 100 plus 24 squared, which is 576, does that give me 26 squared, 676? Hmm. Well, yes, 676 equals 676. So, yes, it is a right angle. And so, therefore, it is a tangent line, or in this case, a little bit of a segment. <clears throat> if two segments from the same exterior point are tangent to a circle, okay, so here's an exterior point. I've got two segments, this one and this one and we're saying they're tangent because they're touching, all right, then they are congruent. So then you can say, if you already know that you have this kind of a picture, then you can write, hey, this piece right here is congruent to this piece right here. Okay, let's use it. We want to find the value of x. Of course, that's a nice complicated picture. Assume the segments appear to be tangent to the circles are tangent. So you're going to say, hey, these are actually tangent. Uh, actually tangent. So this piece, that piece is congruent to this piece. So I will say 10 is equal to y. Okay, well that's helpful because if that's the case then I will put 10 in for y. So this piece, 10 minus 5, is equal to 5. So segment GE is equal to 5. But what's crazy about that, if you have this entire line is tangent to this line, then this piece from here to here is 15, and I already know that y is 10, then I know that this has to be 5 as well. This piece right here has to be equal to 5, so now I know x is equal to 1, and that's what I needed to find. Triangle HJK is circumscribed about triangle G. Find the perimeter of triangle HJK if NK is equal to JL plus 29. <laughs> Okay, so um, once again, that definition circumscribed, you can see it's circling around, the triangle is doing that around circle G, it's like um, touching each part of that circle on the outside. Okay, NK is equal to JL plus 29. It would be great if I could figure out what JL is, wouldn't it? Well, here's what we use. We have to think in terms of tangents now. This is a point, an exterior point. Here's a tangent line, here's a tangent line. <gasps> if this is 16, then this would be 16. So JL, I'm not gonna write JL, I'm gonna say, hey, that's 16. So now NK is gonna be 16 plus 29, which is equal to 45. What do I need to find? Find the perimeter. So this piece is 45. But doesn't that mean this piece right here is congruent and is also 45. This piece is 16, this piece is 16, this tangent piece is 18. Oh, then this piece also has to be 18. Okay, so what do I have? I have 16 plus 16 plus 45 plus 45 plus 18 plus 18. So all of those add up to the perimeter 
And if I've done my math correctly, I'm getting 158. And I don't think I need a label on this. It's just 158 units for my perimeter. Example seven, this is, says triangle not is circumscribed. The triangle is circumscribed, but the name of the triangle is NOT. Every time I look at this, I'm like, what? Um, it's circumscribed about circle M. Find the perimeter of triangle NOT if CT is equal to NC minus 28. Okay, I'm gonna get you started on this one. I'm gonna put CT is equal to NC minus 28. Okay, what we really need to find is NC, which is already given. I think I'm just going to let you finish that off. Example 7 is all yours. Okay, a couple of things you need to have in your notes that we're going to have to do with our project. Um, we don't really have any math involved. Like maybe we will. There's no like formulas. or It's always good to know what internally tangent circles look like. So I have circles, and that tangent work kind of means touching. And look at how they're touching in this spot, this point of tangency. Isn't that kind of crazy? Um, and one's inside the other. That's why it's called internal. So internally tangent circles. And you can have more than one. You can have four internally tangent circles. Okay. Now, if you think that's internal tangent, here's externally tangent circles. Notice, point of tangency, like right there, that's where they're touching. Okay. And they're not internal to each other. They're external. Okay, internal means kind of inside, external means on the outside. So these circles are not inside of each other, they're basically outside from each other, if that makes sense. Here's an external tangent line. See the wording on that? Let me go back. External tangent circles versus external tangent line. Okay, so here's your line is external to those that's on the outside, and it's tangent to both of them. And you can have an external tangent line a line that's externally tangent to more than two circles. You could have three or four or five circles. You can just imagine just drawing some more circles in there. Um, and actually, you could do something crazy. Like here's two externally tangent lines. Of course, I should draw a little better, right? So there's lots of different ways you could say things and still draw them out. An internal tangent line. Okay, you're like, whoa, how's this different from the other one? Notice how it's on the outside and they're on the same on the outside. They're on that same side of the external tangent line. These are what we call internally tangent. The line is on the inside of these two circles. It forms like the inner inner barrier or something there between the two. Whereas in the previous one, I just want to use this one example right here, they're keeping it on the same side. Um, I would look at that. We will probably talk about some more pictures. We might put some different things up in class, but be aware those are kind of your initial vocabulary to get that going. And that is crazy, isn't it? That is an internally tangent circle. I mean, many internal tangent circles. It's almost artistic, isn't it? All right, and that ends our lesson.